Okay, we're going to try something new on this video. I've got the speed doubled, and we're going to do a voiceover. These are all my boxes that came in. I think I had one or two boxes that wasn't damaged. That's the engine box, and the seam is blown right open. There was some other damages on other boxes, holes, corners crushed. Uh, we're going to take out the main frame right now and start putting some of the pieces on it. I'm laying it on this cardboard upside down to make it a little easier to get the casters and brackets on the bottom of the frame. And we had a few loose nuts rolling around in the bottom of the box. They give you a list of all the tools you need to put this thing together with. And you're definitely going to need some side cutters to get all of these zip ties off that's holding all the parts on. <clears throat> Now I guess I'm going to go over and get the casters and open them up. They're very well put together. Extremely heavy. And well packed. That's the hardware package and that's the casters. This particular unit has dual wheels on each side to help support the weight in soft ground. And they have caps on the ends of the axles, probably to keep them from poking through the box in rough handling. And believe me, when FedEx finally gets this thing to your house, it's going to be handled pretty roughly. Now, in this part of the book, they're telling you to put on the hitch on the back of your tractor, but I'm not going to bolt mine onto the back of the tractor because it'd be in the way for other implements that I use with this tractor, especially when I put the big rototiller on it. So we're going to make something a little different. And when we get it put together, I'll show you what it looks like. Right now, I'm putting on the hinge blocks that the collector container or collector unit will hinge on so you can tip it up and dump it. I guess an impact would have been nice to screw this thing together with. Pretty much everything is held together with 5 16 bolts and self-locking flange nuts for added strength. They tell you to tighten everything securely, but don't crush the tubing. They said that this assembly could take up to two hours, depending on 
if you're going to break it up into sections like I did. I had an hour into it. And them are the J hooks that go on to the collector unit that hooks on to the hinge blocks that we just installed. <clears throat> Now we're going to put the brackets on for the casters. Now you can mount these casters two different ways. You can bolt the bracket onto the frame, and then you can bolt the casters onto the bracket, or you can use a quick release pin so you can get the casters off easily when you're going to break this thing down and store it on the wall. I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point. So I'm going to use the quick release pins and the bridge pins that lock them on. Now the instructions show using two quick release pins on each side, but you only get one pin for each side. The other one is a bolt that stays on there that you slide one side of the caster under and then you slide your pin in place Some of this stuff you could almost use two people to hold things as you're trying to put stuff together. Now we're going to slide this one under there. That's the bolt, and it comes with the quick release pins in the bracket already for you. It's just that them bridge pins are harder to pull out than the hair pins that I typically use in this situation. I've noticed a lot of craftsmen riders all use these bridge pins instead of the hairpins that are much easier to quicker to pull in and out. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little harder to get them to snap in also. And you can see how easy the one side slides under. And of course, I'm working downhill here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> downhill here in the driveway. And the casters just don't want to stay out of my way. <coughs> Boy, must have swallowed a bug. <clears throat> they tell you to check and tighten all bolts because when they pre-assemble some of this stuff, they just screw things together by hand. <clears throat> and, of course, they come full of air. You don't have to fool that. Each tire turns independently from the other ones, so they swivel nicely. 
And I would think a little bit of grease once in a while in there would really help things when you're moving. Now the next thing they want you to do is put on the fork assemblies or hitch fork assemblies. And you can see that box is pretty busted up also. And that was inside of another box. I don't know how they handle this stuff, but they sure beat it up pretty bad. Other videos I've watched as they unbox things, they all look the same, pretty much beat up. <clears throat> Now, because I've got the third wheel lift, you don't want to put in all four bolts on these hitch forks. Because the back two, you got to take out to get the third wheel jack installed. <clears throat> and it comes with a longer bolt. So I'm not really sure why I'm putting those bolts in place. I can't remember. I guess it's the front two bolts you need to replace. Now, which box is that in? Ah, this has got to be it. Everything's packed well. It's all in styrofoam. Every piece comes with its own directions. They give you a speed wrench to lift the jack up and let it down to get it on the back of your machine. <clears throat> and that is the quick release bracket to take the jack off. And that has to be removed when you use this unit. And it has a crossbar you have to install that the jack actually mounts to. Now remember, don't crush the tubing. There's another quick release pin to remove the bracket from the jack so you can bolt it on. And everything comes with bolts. I wasn't sure any nuts or bolts or pieces on this assembly, which is unusual. Of course, wait a minute, this isn't made in China. These are totally made completely in the United States. With a American workforce. Now that just slides in there, put the pin in and you're done. <clears throat> Now it does wiggle a little bit and they send you <coughs> the ja the uh, speed wrench comes with a universal joint on it so your hand doesn't hit the blower while you're trying to jack it up or down. And I showed a little bit of wiggle in the bracket 
they do send you a set screw you can put in the back to tighten that up if you really want to. I opted out from that. Now we got to move that out of the way and we got to get the collector unit out of the box. So far that's about the most heaviest piece there is. I'm just going to pull the box up off of the part instead of trying to take that out of the box. Yeah, that was graceful. I don't know how well this mic is picking things up, but if you can hear a clicking or a sounds like water dripping, that's some kind of bird I got outside of the building sitting in a tree yakking, I guess. Now these things are extender brackets. There's five different models of the Cyclone Rakes. There's the Classic, the Commander, the Commercial Pro, the XL, that's what I got, and the Z10. The two larger units, they give you these extender brackets that go on the collector unit that spreads the back end of the unit wider so when it gets packed full of leaves, it can slide out better because the back is wider than the front is. The other th smaller units do not have this option. <clears throat> it's a little confusing which one went on which side. I had to look them over a little bit. But luckily I didn't get ahead of myself and put the J hooks on and had to take them back off. Yeah, now we can see what we're doing. Sometimes I wish I had a camera person. Now they want you to open this collector up. I think it would have been easier if they had you open it up like it is then tip it up on its front and let it stand upward. It'd been a lot easier to get all the parts under there and get them bolted together. Now the J-hooks on this one bolt to the extender bracket instead of the tubular frame. And you can see it's a little awkward trying to get this thing assembled sitting on the ground like this. I wish I would have thought about it at the time and just stood it up on its front. It would have been a lot easier. Now the first side isn't bad, but when you go to do the second side, you really got to pull on it to stretch that canvas to get that thing assembled right. But that is a very tough material. I don't know what it is, but there you go.
That bird out there is just driving me nuts. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Now they want you to fold it all back up. And then set it on the frame. More zip ties to cut. This is the bar that goes on the back of the machine to keep it spread open. And then you have the bracket that keeps it tipped up when you want to empty the bag. And on the bottom of this frame, they have some nice rubber mounts that sit on the tubular frame of the machine. Now we're going to try and get the engine and get that set in place. I'm not sure how heavy the engine is, but I couldn't lift it out of the box. I tried, so I just cut the box open and slide it out through the side. Again, it's very well packed with this expanding foam. And it's mounted on wheels. That's so once you get it off, you can roll it off to the side. Now, to pick this thing up. <laughs> it's heavier than what it looks. It's not something I'd want to do every day. I'm thinking as long as I have the room, I am going to leave this thing put together and just back it in the building. And those are the engine clamping knobs, and they have rubber washers on them, I guess, to keep them tight. And you don't need any wrenches to take this thing apart or to reassemble it every fall when you want to use it. It's all tool-free design. The initial assembly, you're going to need some tools for that. In the next video, I'll show you how I made the bracket to hold on the deck adapter. I couldn't use the one they sent me, so I just sent it back to them. Now, a lot of videos, they want to know why they didn't put a window or something in the front of this bag to see when it was full. But the way this chute is made, once the bag gets full, it's going to come shooting out of that opening in the bottom. When the bag is empty, the force of the wind coming through that yellow tube is going to force it upwards, and it won't come out of them overflow holes. But once that hopper gets full, believe me, you're, <laughs> you're going to know it because that stuff is going to be flying sideways. Now this one came with electric start. So we're going to try to get that battery wiggled in there. They tell you you got to really wiggle it to get it in. That was an hour meter that I'm going to install on the motor so I know how many hours it's been running for maintenance. And when I go to sell it, I can say, look, it's only ran for this many hours. 
The timer will be tied into the stator in the engine. So whenever the engine is running, it will be racking up hours. Now this is the tricky part. Getting that wiggled in there. And the knob goes through and holds the battery pack and the engine in place. Now when I had this all together off camera, I went out my building and got my shipping scale. And this thing, before I put that 10 pound battery on there, it had a 117 pound tongue weight. Now we'll plug it in and see how it runs. And of course it didn't want to start because I never turned the gas on. And you can see it, the air coming out of that chute is actually blowing the whole machine out of the garage. So that's it for this video. The next one will be working on the hitch and the deck adapter. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.